This is the foundation. Many of the fast footwork skills be... Now we're going to see the first variation in the fast footwork skills. The side to... Now Franz will demonstrate pulling the V. The ball is passed back and forth between the feet, then pushed out on an angle. The next of the fast footwork skills is the step on. To do this move, step on the top of the ball with the sole of the foot and bring your foot. Now Franz will demonstrate the next variation of the fast footwork skills, the roll behind the leg. This fast footwork skill, called the step over, is good for developing hip flexibility and for sh The next fast footwork skill, the alternate push out pull back. Franz will now demonstrate the side roll. The next skill is called the full sole roll. The final fast footwork skill is the garincha, named for a Brazilian star of the... As I said, this is a period of creativity. The players are in a confined area of about 15 by 25 yards. Each player has... In the next drill, we've added five players without soccer balls. The player... One of the attacking players serves the ball from a corner, and the three players in blue shirts use a... Fainting which is done with all parts of the body, the head, the body, the legs, is the art of convincing your defender that you're going to do one thing when in your own mind you know you're going to do something entirely different. Now here are some basic fainting moves designed to make you a better attacking player. When I think of fainting, two words come to mind, convincing and actor. Two players from the Bush Soccer Club will demonstrate the first of the fainting, the come off, is a reversal of the previous skill. Now the players will form a line. To the next fainting skill is the step over. In this move, the this is the Cruyff, named after the renowned Dutch player, Johan's move is called the pull behind. The attack move, called the faint kick, has the attacker running at the ball as if to the situation more realistic. This move, this move should look similar to the fast footwork skill called pulling the V. The roll in front. As with the previous move, the fake kick, the draw across the body, and the push off. The fainting move is the cap. It's similar to the... F in slow motion, you can see the fake kick, the cap under the body, and the touch with the outside of the opposite foot. The first fainting drill is a two versus two drill in which the two attacking players in the white uniforms can pass or use any of the fast footwork or fainting moves to keep possession of the ball. The defenders in blue are passive at first. Then we increase the pressure as the attacking players become more proficient with the moves. The four players on the outside of the square act as reserves and they can change places with the players in the square at any time. Now, each of the four players outside the square can be used as walls. This gives the attacking players another option. The walls are free to play with the team in possession of the ball, or they can pass to each other, but they are limited to one touch with a seven versus five drill. There are five players on attack and five on defense with ball possession changing after each scoring attempt. The two players in red always play with the attacking team. This drill is the five versus five. In this drill, we eliminate the two players in red, making the attacking and defending sides even. Five versus seven. In this version, the two players in red join the defending team, putting even more pressure on the attacking players between running with the soccer ball and dribbling the soccer ball. It's advisable in the game, if you have space in front of you and no opponents close by, to push the ball out in front of you further, a distance of three, four, five yards, and run after it. You can run faster without the ball than you can with it. Dribbling, on the other hand, requires frequent touches on the ball. Franz will now demonstrate the first of the dribbling skills, a very basic the second in our series of dribbling skills. 
Franz will now demonstrate the third dribbling skill, the first in a series of single scissors skills, is the single scissors. The next variation in the single scissors skills is the with a dead ball, the players will do the single scissors skills is the single scissors. Now Franz will demonstrate the double scissors. Next dribbling skill is the single Matthews, named for the great English star of the Matthews is a variation of the single Matthews. Lean to one side and play the ball to the inside with the inside of the raised foot. Then, with the same foot, take a big step to the side and slightly to the rear. Transfer the weight and play the ball off with the outside of the other foot. Swivel. To do the swivel, check out the important points in the swivel. The feint to one side, the hip turn as the shoulder drops, and finally the swivel and turn back the other way. Move is the swerve. As you approach motion, it looks as if Franz is going to pass in one direction. Instead, he drags the ball across the body and immediately pushes it off in the opposite direction. Next move is the inside outside. To do this move, pay attention to the way Franz takes short hops as he applies alternating touches to each side of the ball, then quickly moves off in his chosen direction. Watch the combination of the two moves. The inside outside, followed by the single scissors around the ball. Final dribbling skill is the mick. You can see Franz roll the ball with the sole of the foot. The foot then follows the contour of the ball down the outside. He plants that foot and plays the ball away with the outside of the other foot. We'll start with the players in two lines and have them do the single scissors around the ball, starting with working towards each other in this way, Simir standing in a line with about four to six yards between them. The player in the middle and a player on sequence look similar to the previous one. There are three players in line, and only the middle player has a ball. He passes it to the player facing him, who puts the dribbling move teams of six players on the borders of a rectangular area marked with cones. A player at each of the four corners has a ball, and there are two defenders mid versus one drill with two teams of three players in a confined area, each team with a different colored shirt. There is a ball at each corner. The players at one side of the rectangle will pass the This is a variation on the last drill, and here, goals have been added. The attacking player is rewarded for getting by his defender with a shot on goal. Drill, we have three teams of two players, playing two versus two, ending with a shot on goal. The players are allowed to use any of the dribbling skills, as well as passing, to maintain possession of the ball. After each scoring attempt, the defenders become the attacking team and the goalkeeper serves the ball to resume play. This drill will set up two lines of five players attacking a goal. When a player has completed his attack, he becomes a defender against the other team. The next drill is a three versus three. Three players in white shirts square off against three players in blue shirts. The main Game-related situations give players a chance to polish their skills under very realistic conditions. Our first game is a seven versus five. After each shot on goal, the defenders become the attackers, and the two players in red join this team. We've taken the previous drill and eliminated the two players in red, making the teams even and putting a little more pressure on the attacking team. We've brought back the players in red for the final game sequence, but this time they join the defending team. 
best 1-2 dribbling drill, there are four players, two with soccer balls, two without. As a player on one team attacks, a player on the other team becomes a defender. Now the players are given the option to use any of the dribbling skills as well as the 1-2 pass to move the ball. The next drill uses five players in a confined area with one ball. The two player of the dribbling option to the attacking player. The next drill highlights the long 1-2 pass. In this drill, we again have the confined area, but it is much larger, marked with four cones. There are four players, three players in white, each at a cone. Once again, we have added the dribbling option to the long 1-2 drill. Now this drill is two versus one. There are two walls, and the attackers may pass to each other or to the walls. The walls may touch the ball only once. We're looking for the 1-2 combination between the players in the middle as much as possible. Now we have a one versus one situation with four moving walls on the outside of the rectangle. The player in the middle can play to the walls or take on the defender himself. Once again, the wall can only play the ball once. Now we have two players in the middle. A pass is made to the player with his back to the goal, who in turn lays it off to the advancing player and he then shoots on goal. We have moved back into the confined area for the next drill, a one, two, three sequence. There are two teams of three players. A player on one end passes to a player on the other end, who returns the pass and advances. The first passing player receives the ball and passes it to a third player who is running forward. This player then passes it back to an end player and the rotation continues. Same drill and add a goal, simulating a crowded penalty area. A player in blue serves as a defender. For our final 1-2 drill, we'll set up one more goal, taking us even closer to the pressure of a game situation. In the middle, two white-shirted players play against two red-shirted players. The two players in blue are stationary target players, one for each team, making it a three versus two drill. The object of this drill is to use combination passing to set up a shot on goal. 